You know, we know that there already is a robust Justice Department investigation surrounding the former president, surrounding many of his allies when it comes to the attack on the U.S. Capitol on January 6th and efforts to overturn the 2020 election. But, Jake, as we've been talking about, the committee does believe that they found evidence of a crime and they don't, they've, you know, sort of felt like while they may not be in the business of prosecuting crimes, they can't just sit on their hands and not make that public and not make these sorts of referrals. All right, let's bring in Ellie Honig, senior, CNN senior legal analyst. Ellie, t tell me about the significance of these referrals if ultimately the committee votes to refer Donald Trump on these charges. Remember, we're just saying that the that Sarah's reporting that these are two charges that the committee is going to vote on whether or not to refer Donald Trump on. Let's assume that they do. Tell us about these referrals. So, Jake, there's no legally binding impact to these referrals. Prosecutors can and do take referrals all the time from all manner of sources. It doesn't require DOJ to do anything. DOJ does not need a referral in order to do anything. However, this would still be enormously significant if the committee decides to make this referral. We would have a bipartisan committee of Congress essentially saying to the DOJ, we have done our work. We know this committee has uncovered all manner of evidence over the past year and a half, and we believe it matches up with these crimes. And by the way, I don't think it's at all a coincidence that the two crimes that Sarah's reporting are under consideration are the same two crimes that DOJ has already gone in front of a judge and said, we believe there's at least probable cause, not necessarily enough to bring an indictment, but enough that we could get certain investigative materials, and the judge agreed. So I think the committee here is trying to sing off the same play sheet as a DOJ. That's the Judge Carter case having to do with, I guess it was a John Eastman's emails. Am I, am I getting that right? Exactly. So DOJ wanted to get access to those emails. Uh, John Eastman and others argued, well, they're, attacked, we're, they're protected by attorney-client privilege. DOJ countered and said, yes, but there's evidence in those emails of an ongoing crime. It's what's called the crime fraud exception. And the judge said, DOJ is right. We think that those emails are evidence of at least one ongoing crime, including the two crimes Sarah just reported the committee is considering, which is a conspiracy to defraud the United States and an obstruction of Congress, meaning trying to obstruct the counting of electoral votes in, co in Congress. So assuming that the committee votes uh, to refer these two charges uh, regarding Donald Trump to the Justice Department, does it go to the newly appointed special counsel or does it go to Merrick Garland, the attorney general? And what do you think the odds are that either man or whoever the right person is would actually take up these charges and try to prosecute a former president, Donald Trump? So it goes to the whole world, Jake. It becomes really public. I suppose there's some parts of it that the committee could could convey over to prosecutors under seal or confidentially. I think in the first instance, you would send it to Jack Smith, to the special counsel. He's now the one who's tasked with running this operation, this investigation on a day to day basis. Important that people understand Jack Smith is going to have the first say as to whether there should be an indictment or not. But under the special counsel regulations, that then has to go to the attorney general, Merrick Garland. He has to now give great weight to whatever Jack Smith says. But ultimately, Merrick Garland has to sign off or not. Uh, whether they're going to charge or not, well, look, we know the committee has provided a solid foundation of evidence. We can't know everything they have. We'll certainly know more next week. But in my view, based on my time as a prosecutor, I think there is a rock-solid foundation here for prosecutors to move on. All right, Eli Honig, thanks so much. We're going to take a quick break.